This is the first of a handful of videos covering the experiences that spurred me to question my religion, leave Christianity, and to finally identify as an atheist. I'm hoping that reviewing my experiences will help me to refine my thinking and create a record that I can look at later. I also want to create this video for family and friends who find out that I'm an atheist, but don't understand why I identify as an atheist, or the experiences that led me to atheism. In-person conversations have been occasionally frustrating, so I'm using a video as a way to record and communicate the personal experiences and thought processes that led to my atheism. If I've linked you to this video, I hope that this will provide you an explanation for why I identify as an atheist. With that out of the way, let me start at the beginning. I grew up in a fairly conservative form of Christianity. I sincerely believe that my religion was true. I believed God was all loving and all powerful, that Jesus died for humanity, and that I needed to accept the gospel for salvation. I attended church each Sunday with my family. I made friends at church, and I had experiences that I believed were the Holy Spirit. Two experiences precipitated the first small cracks in the foundation of my religious faith. These experiences revealed pernicious aspects of the cognitive dissonance I experienced drove me to try to harmonize my religious faith with my values. I failed. Instead, my efforts forced me to completely deconstruct my religious beliefs and my faith. The first crack in my religious beliefs started in high school. It started small, just a nagging, ill-defined sense that my religious beliefs didn't quite fit together. I believed that my religion was the one true faith. I believed that spiritual salvation came through Jesus Christ and that a person to be saved needed to accept and believe in Jesus Christ. But I also knew people personally who were not Christians, were not interested in becoming Christians, and who held sincere religious beliefs of their own. They did not believe in Jesus Christ, and therefore, according to the religious, to my own religious, they did not believe in Jesus Christ, and therefore, according to my own religious beliefs, they would not be saved. This bothered me. It seemed inherently unfair. I never fully resolved this. Instead, I, I rationalized it away. God must have a plan. He works in mysterious ways, I reasoned. He was all-knowing. If I, as a fallible human being, couldn't find a logically consistent way to reconcile my belief in salvation with the other faith systems out there, I thought that God could. Even in high school, this seems like a cop-out, but it worked on a superficial level to address the cognitive dissonance, and I actively pushed the issue out of my mind. I papered over the crack in my religious beliefs and did my best to ignore it. And yet, a few times a year, I'd briefly think, I know non-Christians who believe as sincerely as I do. What basis do I have to say that those beliefs are wrong and that my beliefs are right? And the second crack in my religious beliefs started in my first year in college. It arose from a conversation that caused me to reevaluate the intersection of my beliefs and my morality. I had a friend in college. I'll call him Bob. Bob and I met at church. We were both freshmen at college and even had a few classes together. Occasionally, we'd study together or just chat after the class about the main takeaways from the lecture. One day, after a political science class, we were talking about our general thoughts on the lecture. In the course of the conversation, Bob justified the use of torture by the U.S. against enemy combatants. This shocked me. I'm not sure that torture can ever be justified. It's dehumanizing, disproportionate to any crime, and inherently a cruel and inhumane punishment. 
it isn't even an effective way to obtain information because a person will say anything to stop torture. Torture is unethical, immoral, and illegal. And I still find it disturbing that support for the use of torture is so widespread in the United States. Anyway, as I said, Bob and I were friends. We went to the same college, attended some of the same classes, and were in the same church. I knew Bob as a friendly, religious, and generally moral person, and yet here he, in a casual conversation, supported intentionally inflicting pain on another human being by our government. And to cap it off, Bob cited a proclamation by a church leader that seemed to support the use of torture. Using religion to support an action that I thought was deeply unethical shook my confidence in my faith as a source of moral instruction. After the conversation, I needed to affirm my ethics and values and beliefs. I needed to affirm that they were coherent and co consistent. I sought out an explanation that could reconcile my religious beliefs with my personal ethical convictions. And to resolve this, I rationalized that the faith and God were perfect, but that the people in it were not. That the people were fallible, but that the institution was perfect. If I had been able to entrench this rationalization firmly in my worldview, I may have learned to balance my religious faith with my ethical convictions. But at this critical moment, I found a poll that undercut my rationalization. The poll showed that religious churchgoers in the United States, like Bob and myself, were far more likely to support the use of torture. I've linked a Pew Forum survey in the description below, which shows similar findings. This wasn't, I found, just a person being imperfect. Religion or religious belief in some way or form was teaching people to justify the use of torture against our fellow human beings. And I wondered directly for the first time if religious belief really was a good foundation for my ethics and values. If God and Christianity wasn't the source of morality, then without a fight. To conclude, I, I know many ethical and faithful Christians, as well as ethical Jews, atheists, Muslims, and one or two Hindus and Buddhists. Most of my friends and extended family remain believers today. I can see how you can build a strong ethical framework within the parameters of a religious belief system. But for me, the claim to spiritual or moral authority by Christianity is deeply tarnished. Ethics and morality require care and thought. It's a difficult issue with a lot of nuance. And unfortunately, in my personal experience, many denominations of Christianity fail to teach believers how to think or act morally. This is the natural result of a belief system that emphasizes obedience to God and to religious authority. Many Christian sects conflate obedience and morality, and in doing so, they breed ignorant blind believers who would burn the whole world down if ordered to by their church's leader or pastor. While there are ethical believers who think carefully about how to act, too many believers simply obey their religious leaders, perpetuate ignorance and injustice, and harm our society or their fellow creatures. They fail to evaluate the ethics or morality of their actions and beliefs because of their complete and utter certainty that their God's edicts support their conception of good and evil, right and wrong, and of sin. When believers justify harmful actions with an appeal to a religious authority, 
I do blame the underlying religious faith for encouraging such lazy, harmful, and ignorant patterns of thinking. My old faith conflated obedience and morality. And when I saw this in my religious belief, it started to crumble. <laughs>